I will very, very, very probably do it again, okay? Very, very, very probably. Very, very, very probably. They love it, but what does it mean? <laughs> very, very, very probably. Hmm. Will he? And what happens if he does? Let's ask two insiders. I know we have the midterms, but remember, this is going to be uh, a launch pad or a sinkhole for former President Trump, depending on how glorious the outcome is that he can take credit for or maybe have to own. OK, we have former Democratic presidential candidate Howard Dean and former Trump White House communications director Stephanie Grisham. It's good to have you both. Thank you very much. Thanks. I'm so lucky to have you guys. We're going to do two blocks. I hope they told you that. And I hope you don't have dinner plans. Stephanie, <laughs> very, very, very probably explain what that means. Oh, he is going to run. Uh, that's something I've been saying for a couple of weeks now. Number one, it'll help him with all, all of his legal troubles, obviously. Uh, but number two, I don't think he, his ego can take anybody else leading the Republican Party, most certainly DeSantis. Uh, so it's going to get him back into the limelight. It's going to get him to be able to distract from his legal uh, issues and tell everybody how it's a witch hunt, et cetera. Quick bump uh, question to you, Stephanie. Um, do you believe that the reason... Everyone who's close to the former president dismisses DeSantis as a running mate is because, A, they think he's going to run against Trump. B, what is it, the 12th Amendment that, you know, you, the electors can't vote for, for both of them? Um, mm -hmm. uh, which one of those two do you think it is? It's A and there's a C. Uh, much of his inner circle does not like DeSantis. In ah. fact, Susie Wiles, who's his uh, main person right now worked for DeSantis and there's no love lost between Susie and DeSantis. And then also, again, it's it's Trump's ego. And DeSantis has been doing a very good job of emulating Trump's policies and talking about Trump's policies and being very MAGA-like uh, without some of the, well, a lot of the legal issues and other, uh, let's say, rumors that are out there about the president, the former president. So, Howard, I talked to Grover Norquist. We go through the numbers. He makes his case. I push back against his case with what the Democrats could say uh, to mitigate attacks and kind of bolster what's good for the Biden administration. Um, but they don't do that. Do you believe that your party is soft on the messaging side and kind of digging their own hole here? Well, first of all, if, if the, the Grover Norquist's economic platform was actually adopted by the former prime minister, very short prime minister of Britain, and the markets tanked, and that would, that's what would happen if he ever adopted his uh, program. It's nonsense. All this tax cuts, Trump cut tax cuts and ran huge deficits, and here we are. So all that, let's just, that, that was just Republican talking points. However, your point is absolutely right. My party has always done a lousy job mes messaging, and here's why. What the Republicans understand about how you win races, and Clausewitz said it first, which is, Politics is nothing but a substitute for war, or as war has he said it, politics is, a, is war by another means. The Republicans understand that. They're top down. They take orders. They're authoritarian. The RNC is basically run by the president of the United States. Uh, so that happens to a lesser effect when we're in charge. We think we're so smart. We are pretty smart. The trouble is we have a contest to see who can show who's, how smart everybody is, and we don't talk to people the way they need to be talked to, which is very directly and plainly and straightforwardly. So I would agree with the point that we just do not do a good, as good a job messaging as we should. Red wave, red ripple, or do you think you keep the Senate? I think we keep the House and the Senate. Really? Uh, and I'll tell you why. Please. Yes. Because you had an, the largest number of people who have ever voted in a midterm elected have already voted. That is, that is true. 41% of people we, say we they're going to vote early or already did vote. Uh, it could be even bigger than 2018, which is, uh, was a record year in and of itself. Continue. And if you look at the number of Democrats who have cast their ballot, they're a very heavily Democratic. So while I, while I, think, while I think we are being outmessaged by the... Um, by the Republican Party on the economy, which is a good issue for them. Whether it's fair or not, we can debate. Uh, but it's been a, it is a good issue for them. I personally think that Obama, that Biden has been a great and very pleasant surprise for me because I think he's done a lot of the right things. But the messaging, I, I agree, could be better. But the fact of the matter is, what's driving this is young people and women. And the women have already checked the box. We know they're going to vote in huge numbers. Uh, and th I think that's going to put Fetterman in. I think that's going to make uh, elect, re-elect Warnock. 
I'm pretty sure uh, Sherry Beasley's going to win in North Carolina, and I think uh, Ryan's going to win in Ohio. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.